Large-scale satellite dishes can have an imposing presence, but what do they really do? And what impact do they have for us on Earth? Space is a source of endless fascination, but it's not just about discovering what surrounds us in our solar system and beyond, we've also been able to use space to help better connect us on Earth. Satellite communication first allowed us to communicate over huge geographical distances through transmitting and receiving audio and video through radio waves. Goon Hilly was actually uh, used for the first transatlantic television pictures over satellite through the Telstar satellite. So this was a first demonstration of what satellite communications might be used for. NASA, which had been formed in 1958, they had an earlier idea of using Project Relay, which was to test telecommunications via satellite. And the British Post Office were talking to NASA about experimenting with Project Relay. The American Telephone and Telegraph Company were thinking, wait a minute, why are NASA, a space organization, messing around with telecommunications satellites? This is our job. So they, in their labs, had been working on a project called TSX, which subsequently became known as Telstar. And they decided they were going to launch Telstar before Relay. And this was your first demonstration, July 1962, of television across the Atlantic. And of course, the thing is, once you've got communication between men on television, you then think, well, why not telephone calls? As time progressed, of course, it went on to data communications and then the internet. So satellite communications was about getting information from A to B or anywhere across the, across the visible globe. On the far southwestern tip of the UK, a site was chosen to be the location of several large satellite dishes with the aim of helping to link up the world through radio waves. 1965 was the first of the commercial geostationary satellites, 36,000 kilometers. It was placed over the Atlantic Ocean region. So that allowed the USA and South America to communicate with Europe. They then put a satellite over the Pacific Ocean region. So then the Western side of the USA and South America could communicate with Asia, Japan, Australia, etc. And then they put one over the Indian Ocean region which meant Europe could communicate with Asia as well. By 1969, when Goon Hilly had two dishes operational here, Goon Hilly number one there was operating to the Indian Ocean region, and Goon Hilly two that was operating to the Atlantic Ocean region. So the UK could get to both these ocean regions. Clearly it couldn't get to the Pacific Ocean because you can't see the Pacific Ocean from the UK. So in order to get to that side, you'd have to go a double hop. So you'd hop, say, to America and then hop again through another satellite. As well as enabling large-scale communication and broadcast networks, we've also been able to learn more about our planet through satellites monitoring Earth from high above the surface. Earth observation could be looking at deforestation, for example, fires occurring, sea levels, how much they're rising, lowering at a time, how the tides are changing, all these kinds of things are happening through Earth observation satellites. Climate change is being monitored and in fact without those spacecraft and what they've discovered over the years, we wouldn't know half as much about greenhouse gases as we know today. So from, from out in space we're looking at what is man doing to this Earth and then we can come up with, with, with uh, mitigation. Once people started to realise the, the, that you could get cameras on satellites, high quality cameras to actually see down to the finest detail of what's happening on Earth, and of course you've got navigation as well, sat-nav for example, I mean now you can point out to less, much less than a metre an area on Earth. With technological advances and changes in how communication networks operate, many of the systems that relied upon the infrastructure of sites such as Gunhili 
and no longer need it in their original form. But this is not the end of the story for Gunhili, as work is underway to bring a new lease of life to the area and once again launch this iconic site to the forefront of satellite communication. So what is the future for Gunhili? It looked like the way ahead for satellite was for mobile communications. But then also you have, of course, when the internet came along, you have landlocked countries where submarine cables don't work. So the middle of Africa, for example, you can't use submarine cables to get to them. So again, satellites were the way in which you could bring communications to landlocked countries. Linked to that, of course, you've then got deep space network communications where you have masses of, of, of spacecraft out there. Some may be for earth monitoring, uh, environmental monitoring, uh, weather monitoring, deep space missions going out to find more about the solar system, missions to Moon, Mars, etc. And that's where Gunhali Antenna Number 6 comes in because it's perfectly designed for that kind of deep space network operation. What is happening more recently is with so much more being put in low Earth orbit, the debris that is out there is becoming a problem. Not least when you're launching something out and you've got to make sure you miss anything that's in the way. So you have to know where all these bits of debris are and put your launch time accordingly so you miss it. There are now many, many people working on space debris, looking at ways of harpooning it, magnetizing, getting those kinds of things. You've got to find ways of avoiding debris impacting on our future lives. So with the drive to explore and understand more about what lies beyond our atmosphere, satellite technology will continue to have a role. But we're also discovering even more about our own planet through our ventures into the solar system. The data we collect through communicating with devices orbiting far above our planet could unlock further secrets about our place in the universe as we further explore and utilize the resources of space on Earth. <laughs>